every negative comment that I see, I laugh at, you know, when it comes to me. Like, it really has no effect to me, uh, honestly, you know. What I don't like is the people around me, them being like, hmm. come at for that hurts me a lot, you know. Hey family, a quick one. Over 87% of you are consuming this content every single week but are not subscribed. That means you are enjoying the growth conversations but you are not liking, you are not subscribing and you are not sharing it with others. So please, I plead with you, please subscribe so that you can share the love, you can share the growth and you can share this wonderful platform and wonderful safe space with others as well. Enjoy the episode. When, when, when you came in here, today uh, i i uh, had this feeling of this guy has been on tv uh, intentionally mm -hmm. going to tv because i believe you were trying to pursue um, a new career yeah. or explore a different side of who you are now that you're out of television in the traditional sense where you were there for like what 72 days yeah do you believe being on tv has made you find your why as a mm -hmm. person that's a actually a very good question yeah um in terms of finding my why as a person, I still feel like the pursuit of finding my why will never end. Sure. You know, sure, I don't sure. feel like I'm there. Yeah. You yeah. know, in terms of finding it, I feel like it's a constant pursuit for me. Mm -hmm. But it has given my direction a whole lot more clarity. Sure. You know, yeah, I'm yeah. more clear in what I want now. You know, the path has never been clearer for me. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that's the best answer that I could give for that question. Don't you think, though, it's a, it's a bit of a harsh way because you're going into a platform that has mm. a lot of vitriol, a lot of criticism, a lot of people who want to nitpick your life because <laughs> I'm sure there's never been a point where people want to know about your life so much <laughs> as in right now. Yeah. So isn't it a harsh, deep end that you put yourself in that maybe wasn't necessary? It really is. It really is a harsh, deep end. Uh, would I say I feel like it wasn't necessary? No. Mm -hmm. I do feel like it is necessary because, I mean, when you're trying to achieve something great or you're trying to do good, yeah. you, it's inevitable that you're going to experience some backlash yeah. Yeah. or negativity attached to it, you know, yeah. or things that you don't like. The road will never, ever be smooth, you know, and it's never going to be a smooth sailing. Um, but however, with me taking this journey, I do feel like it's definitely the best decision that I've ever made in my life because it ex it's exposed me to opportunities that I never even thought I would ever be at my disposal. So. Especially being in the Eastern Cape because naturally... Yeah. The, the the location yeah, yeah 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 i mean it's a bit far from everything you yeah, know um yeah. the the entertainment industry yeah the sports industry yeah, is just just massive you know it's 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 exactly what i needed to walk mm -hmm. into you know so i'm very happy about that at the right age too i think you're definitely at the right yeah. age to be pursuing such goals and such dreams yeah don't you think i, I do i do yeah. i don't feel like first of all i'm someone that believes it's never too late mm -hmm. you know i feel like whenever you step into a certain space or whatever it's always at the right time you know um, i'm a very big believer i'm a christian so everything that happens i believe it's at the right time in terms of age though i really do feel like it's the perfect age for me you know i feel like not too old pretty young you know and i've got so much time to even make mistakes you know and to just figure out the road and like be perfect at my craft so yeah in terms of time i agree i think it's a perfect time for real speaking of mistakes what's your biggest mistake you've ever made Biggest mistake that I've ever made. So, um, I was self-employed when I have a flat came in here. Yeah. And I remember the first paycheck I got, I blew it all on myself. I blew it all on myself. I was not responsible with that money. And yeah. it set me on the back foot immediately, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I had to limp, uh, you know, ask parents. And my parents are like, hey, man, this is all on you. You know, yeah. you have yeah. to learn yeah. how to handle money. So, yeah. Yeah. for me, I definitely think that's definitely the biggest mistake that I've ever done. But what, what do you take from that? Because Joburg is the same. You're going to get a lot of opportunities. You're going mm. to start getting gigs because yeah. it's the gig economy. And that's money that usually comes in cash in and out. And it's, 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 ra it's rather big sums of money. Yeah. So you'll have to also implement a financial strategy for yourself, mm. perhaps budgeting or whatever. Um, was that important for you to learn then? Because where you are now, you're able to get these types of monies, you know? divine intervention i believe man because yeah. it's like me having my business before and making all those irresponsible financial decisions prior 
now I'm, I know exactly what I need to do with my money. Whenever I get a, I get money or I get a paycheck, I know, okay, this is designated for this and that and that. Yes, I'll splurge on myself here and there, but I feel like majority of the money that I get, I'm very responsible with it. I know exactly what I need to do with it. So, yeah, with, with this life, I feel like I, I was ready for it even before I came in here. You know, my journey before coming here is preparing me for right now. Okay, I'll get into this because uh, it's something that the audience definitely wants to know about. There, in, in our lives, um, myself included, we value family, yeah. we value friendships, relationships. Those essentially are the core of who we are and why we operate and why we live. Mm. I know we have careers that we build in order to make money and also to fulfill our purposes. But in building those careers, it's important that at our core, we remain grounded. Yes. We remain humble and we remain accountable to the people that we love. Mm -hmm. um, you went on TV and it seemed like you're no longer accountable to the people that you love. They saw a side of you that perhaps they didn't know. Um, you might have neglected a relationship that was important to you. And unfortunately, you didn't have access to social media, but it seemed like you were being dragged, you were being reprimanded on social media for changing who you are to fit in into the, into the format of the show. To the extent that we were like, why is this man falling in love on TV when we know that he's in love in real life? Mm -hmm. Do you believe that for your career, you neglected the important things such as your romantic relationship? Uh, just the romantic relationship specifically? We'll, we'll get onto the other stuff, or... things. Do you believe specifically that you neglected such important things like your romantic relationship oh, for like, the career? Oh, okay, okay. I hear your question now. Thank you for the question. Yeah. Um, in terms of that, man, I think I've made it clear in previous interviews that um, I don't really want to get into that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something that I don't want to speak about. I feel like I've spoken about it enough. Mm -hmm. And if you followed my journey, you'll get to understand who I am, mm -hmm. why I made the decision that I made, and how I feel about them, you know, so... Are you happy with your decisions? In general or with this specific... Or... With your decisions in general and who you are at the moment? Oh, yes, definitely, cool. definitely, you know, because cool. I feel like whichever decision that you make in life contributes to who you are, you know. Sure. There's certain things that you have to go through as a person to yeah. propel you to becoming a better version sure. of yourself, you know, so everything that I went through, everything that I've done, you know, it was, I believe it was supposed to happen. Like yeah. that, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm someone yeah. that believes in whatever happens will happen, you know, so yeah. It's also important to note that that specific aspect of your life is your private life. Yeah. And you'd like to keep your private life private. Yeah, yeah. And it's important to maintain a private life in this area that you're in where exactly. everything, everybody wants to know, everybody wants to peace, everybody just mm -hmm. wants to be involved, everybody believes they have the rights, they're entitled to, yeah. to, to, to your life. No, definitely, I agree with that, man. Yeah. And especially for things that mean a lot to you, mm -hmm. it's important to protect the things that mean a lot to you and keep them private and keep them to yourself and to just make sure you nurture them, you know? Because uh, ah, stepping into this light and in this industry, it's the big bad world, you mm -hmm. know? There's a lot, a um, lot of opinion, a lot of aspersions that are cost and everything. So I feel like it's, if, if you want to protect what you love, you're going to keep it away from everything. Correct. Do you without the particular person let's move on from that but as a concept mm -hmm. as an ideal as a principle that you believe in do you believe in love yes definitely yeah. definitely i think in my background and my upbringing i was raised in so much love mm -hmm. you know and that i exude love you know i think a lot of people what i've seen actually on socials ever since i came out of the show is that people could really see that yeah. of me you know yeah. everyone yeah. was like this guy's just full of love, you know, yeah. and it's, it's not like I'm pretending or acting. Yeah. When I went to that show, the, everything that I did was like 100% me, you know. Yeah. I, yeah. You cannot pretend for three months, yeah. I, I believe, you know, <laughs> as too much. Some as tried. Much. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. maybe some did try. I, yeah. it's, there, it's up to them, I don't know. But like for me, um, I, I just, was just myself the entire time and yeah. I'm just someone that just filled with love. And I believe that the world, man, like needs a whole lot of love, you know. What's the best container for love for you for the season? Um, B. Young Temple sat on that chair um, in, in December last year and he has been divorced and he opened up to us about his divorce. And I asked him if he'd get married again. And he said, two years ago, I'd say yes, but now no. And I said, why? He, and he made an analogy that um, he took the glass of water and he said, in this glass of water, there's the glass and there's the water. Mm -hmm. And what's more important, I said, it's the water because the water is life giving. Yeah. So he said, whatever container you choose to put love in, it's up to you. But as long oh, as wow. there's love. Oh, wow. 
that's that's a beautiful analogy but yeah she's actually what would be my container for love right now i think it would be just the relationships that i have around me sure. you know the people that i keep around me you mm-hmm. know stepping into this period of my life has been the one of the most rewarding moments but the most difficult moments in terms of adjusting i mean i've been isolated f- from the rest of the world for a long time mm-hmm. and you come out and there's just so many things that are happening you know and the relationships that i have around me have been that container for me in terms of helping me readjust and get back to my reality and getting back to who i am yeah you know yeah. It, it's been very very helpful so i'd say my container for love right now is definitely the relationships around me that's fair that's fair um a lot of a lot of Rather, something beautiful that I witnessed. Um, my audience didn't know this. I'm a big fan of Big Brother, so really? I watched. I watched it religiously. Oh man! Um, especially this season. So I know a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, something beautiful that happened. We live in a country where black men are vilified for not being great fathers, but mm-hmm. we saw a moment where your dad walked oh, into that house man. and exuded love. Yeah. He showed poise. He showed. Man, Uguba Indota, young and bella. He showed being a man of substance, a man who knows what it is to be a leader mm. and has raised his kids with that level of leadership and, and, and principles and that guidance. What does it mean to have a father like the father you have to you? Man, I'm getting emotionally <laughs> hearing you speak about it. That man has, has been the most amazing person in my life. He's played an extremely pivotal role in my life. Mm. When I think about it, even since I was a kid, He's just always been there, you know, always there holding my hand. My first rugby game, he was there. My first hockey game. Most of my games that I played, he was there, you know. He's just always been a pillar of strength for me, mm, you know. Mm, um, mm. Even when, you know, Moses, I'm a close, I mm. you know. Mm-hmm. Even then, you know, he was just there for me the whole time. He, he did something that fathers don't usually do. He spent, I think, my first week that I spent there, he spent every night there sleeping with me. You know? Wow. Yeah, he's that kind of guy and he doesn't pretend he's just I think for him it's because of his background and how mm-hmm. he grew up, mm-hmm. you know, his parents divorced and he grew up in a very he had a very rough upbringing mm-hmm. and he just told himself that I don't even want to want my kids to go through this and he just rectified the errors. Yeah, know? yeah. So I yeah. feel like maybe him expressing love like that and compassion and just support is him just making sure that he doesn't want to repeat the mistakes that happened in his family growing up. So, yeah. But he could have chosen to say, ah, I was raised badly, so I don't know any better. Why do you think rectifying the mistakes was the option? Because there really are people yeah. who choose to dwell in their circumstances. That's so true. Yeah. And I think it's all with the mentality of the person. Because in any situation, when something bad happens, you could just choose to give up and be like, ah, you know what? I'm just, I'm, I already come from a poor background. My parents are just terrible towards me. My family hates me. Let me just put that out there into the world. Mm, you know? mm, but mm. I think for him, he went through it and he was like, this is not nice, you know? I, I wouldn't want my family to go through this. And when I speak to him, he said he set goals for himself. And mm-hmm. he's like, I at least want to have a home one day. I mm-hmm. want to have a car. Mm-hmm. I want to have a wife. I want to have kids, you mm-hmm. know? And he's mm-hmm. like, nothing ever deterred him from that, you know? Because um, he's actually from Gauteng, so it was, Really? Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then they relocated to the Eastern Cape of okay. Tanzania. You know, and he was just like, I do not want to live the life that I, I lived. Sure. I want better for myself and for my kids one day. So it's, I think it's just a mentality. Thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So do you also grow up in Tanzania your whole life? No, no, no. So me, I grab it, be sure. Okay. It's, it's not too far from Tanzania, yeah, maybe like yeah, yeah. 40 minutes away. It's actually the capital city of the Eastern Cape. Lol. <laughs> Because that condition, <laughs> wow. I know. <laughs> capital, um, that's where the parliament is and yeah. legislature is and everything. Um, so yeah, I grew up at Bishaw for a number of years. Then we later relocated to a go in like King Williamstown, yeah. which is literally like what maybe six minutes away. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all my life I grew up there, lived there. I was born and raised there, man. Mm-hmm. Usnai is Usnai is mm-hmm. because of that whole place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, 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 high school you go to high school in Kings Williamstown as well. Yes, hence the rugby element. Yes, 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 yes. What does rugby teach you as a person? Because sports is so pivotal, I, yeah. I feel, especially in those teenage years, yeah. um, having that extracurricular activity that, that you do, mm. there's something that it does in you, teaching you discipline and things yes. like that. Yeah, you said it hit the uh, nail on yeah. the head with that. In terms of discipline, rugby, in as much as it's a rough game, it mm. really is a gentleman's sport. Okay. The respect that is that each and every single rugby player has is insane. You mm-hmm. know, you have respect for the game, respect for your opponent, respect for the referee. 
your supporters, everyone. It just teaches you respect. Um, but with rugby, though, I had to stop playing rugby, you know, uh, for a minute. When I, was, when I was a kid, I couldn't play rugby um, because so I'm Seventh-day Adventist. Okay. Right? So I, I, I wouldn't... Do Church anything. is on Saturday. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So my parents... All the games are on Saturday. On Saturday. <laughs> so I had to stop playing rugby yeah. and I went for hockey because hockey was played on Friday. So mm-hmm. my parents are like, okay, you can play that sport. It's fine. So I was more of a hockey boy growing Mm -hmm. up, right up until varsity even. Mm -hmm. I played for my university as well. So hockey has just always been my thing rather rather than rugby. But I love rugby. You know, as as a person that grew up in Eastern Cape and I went to the school that I went to, it's nearly impossible to not love Which school was it? Dale College. Dale College. Yes, yes, yes actually, of have, course. We have the most black spring box. Uh, really? Yeah, more than any That's other awesome. school in the That's country. Awesome, man. Yeah. So growing up in a culture like that that just loves rugby, is passionate about rugby, I think me being a lover of sports was just almost inevitable. Hence, I went down this path that I'm going on, mm, which is mm. like a sports broadcaster and presenter and whatnot, you know. So that's where the passion started. It's, it's interesting, um, pivoting back to your dad not having much, to your dad being able to take you to a Dale College. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, um, how does a Dale College then morph you into being a young man um, like who you are? Because those schools, there is undertones, right, mm-hmm. of anti-black mm-hmm. Undertones. I don't want to use the R word, yes, but there's yes, undertones yes. of being anti-black, right? Mm-hmm. We, I went to the same school. I went to George Campbell in in in, in KZN, in oh, Durban. Oh, okay. Um, and there, uh, we we almost have to work ten times harder to fit in <laughs> into certain spaces and to be acknowledged. Um, did you also feel like when you were in that school that hey, so now you need to push harder? You need to push harder for mm-hmm. that acceptance. Or did it? Or was it a time when you went to school? It was like ah, we all feel equal now. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, the time that we went to school. Because my school at the era was it went through a shift. Because mm-hmm. before I think my era, like a long time actually, it was predominantly white, and okay. it, it was just a shift where the school just became predominantly black. So okay. my school okay. is just literally known for black excellence. You okay, know? okay. So I, 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 yeah. I didn't really feel the pressure of I need yeah. to do extra, yeah. you know, whatnot. Because I look to my left, if someone that looks like me, I look to the right, someone that looks like me, and it's just majority of the people in the class. It was like just predominantly black. Mm-hmm. So I never went through that yes the educators and whatnot i wouldn't say they were predominantly black you know um but i never really felt that pressure of maybe having to overextend myself to be at a certain level do you think your life would have worked out differently if your dad was absent definitely Mm -hmm. i do i do like i said he played a very pivotal role in my life you know um lord knows who i'd be or what i'd be doing if he wasn't there for me you know um, cause I, I really do believe that the, the guidance of a father is very important in hmm. a son's life. You know? hmm. And that's what I'm going to do as well. When I yeah. have a kid, one yeah. day, you know, yeah. I want to make sure that as much as my dad was present, I want to be even more present, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, cause obviously as a parent, you make mistakes, you know, um, no parent is perfect. I want to learn from his mistakes that he made, you know, and make sure that I, I, I capitalize on that and I raise my child as best as I can. Yeah. Yeah. Friendships in yeah. the Big Brother house, are they real? The ones that I formed, definitely. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm still friends. Ducky, for example. Yeah. Uh, the other day, I had dinner with his family and my family. You know, my parents were in Joburg. They came. We went over to his house. We had dinner. I think it was even the third or fourth time I was going over to his house to have lunch or dinner. His dad even yeah. said, um, I think you should just move in. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, he, I, ma- I made a friend there. I made a good friend yeah, there. I made a yeah. brother. Which is very rare, I believe, in a, in a situation like that. Because it's a competitive situation. Yeah, yeah. So it's hard, like, finding someone who you sure. really have, like, a genuine connection with. Yeah. So, yeah, that's definitely a friendship that stands out for me from being in the house. Um, the reason I ask that is because I love that you mentioned um, Ducky specifically mm-hmm. because, uh, once again, I watched the show and there was a point where you irritated me because I was like, you are fixated on this Ducky person and you are not <laughs> concentrating on playing your game. Yeah. To an extent where I think it shook you when, when Mitch spoke about you're a gossiper mm-hmm. because really that's what the cameras were showing you doing all really? the time. Damn. There was a there was a good two weeks where Sinai was gossiping all the time, oh and it was like it's a camera thing, it's mm. a production thing where you being because the cameras could be on anybody else. Yeah. But you and Ducky would have a three minutes conversation, 
we on you. Uh, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you really looked like that on the outside. It was like, Damn. geez, this guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Man. so it's, it's nice that you're saying that you guys are actually forming a genuine friendship. Yeah. And in genuine friendships, we talk about people and things. Yeah. yeah. Also on that though, you're very limited in the things that you can speak about when you're in the house. Correct. Like, you're very limited. Yeah. You speak about, uh, I remember there was a point where we were speaking about artists, music and whatnot. And you can't drift too much mm -hmm. on that, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so you kind of have to speak about what's happening inside the house, this person and that person. So very, very limited in the things that correct, we speak correct. about. Correct, correct. And it, it ends up comes across as gossiping. Because yeah, yeah. If you can't speak about brands, if you can't speak about yes. uh, artists, it's like, okay, what? <laughs> what's yes, left? You're very limited. Yeah. You understand? Um, yeah. So yeah, I was, I was, oh, that. That gossip thing really shit me. <laughs> it <actually>. did. <laughs> I was not okay. I think, it was, I think it was Lawrence who brought it up. First. Yeah, yeah. I was like... And then you brought it up again. <laughs> back to back. I'm like, this guy's coming for me. <laughs> you know? um, but yeah, uh, Dougie's like a really good friend of mine. Mm. I think that that bond helped me keep myself sane a lot in mm, that house. Mm, you know, mm. I, without him, I don't know how my journey would have been. I don't think it would have been the same. You know, but yeah, he was he, he was a brother to me on the inside, and even now on the outside, he's still a brother to me. Not regrets, but any mistakes that you think you did in the house that you could have uh, done better. Definitely, definitely, yeah. not holding back a lot in the first. You did. Week. You I did. Held back a lot. Yeah. You know, I was overthinking a lot. Now mm -hmm. that I'm post show, I'm like, there was no need for me to overthink in certain mm -hmm. situations. I could have just lived in the moment from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. not just think about things too much you know that's definitely the only thing for me where i was like ah i could have just let loose because towards the end i was just really relaxed comfortable and myself and people could like really see sides of me that they didn't see apparently like the first i don't know six weeks maybe definitely you know so definitely. yeah that's definitely something that i know i could have done differently you we there was even oof, dare i say you because uh, people who watch big brother have been watching it since early 2000s while it was still big brother africa so their expectation there's early viewers and then these these new viewers yeah. the people like us who've been watching it since back then mm -hmm. um we used to people day two there's fights <laughs> yeah. we're here to watch television yeah. we're not here to watch people sense mm -hmm. what's going on do you know what i mean so definitely that's why it came across as low-key people thinking he's boring but when those weeks six seven eight nine ten when you came out of that shell mm -hmm. and you were confident in who you are and you were showing us your personality i think it it, it resonates with the, the 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 audience that you've built now i mean the yeah. snipers yeah which is what your your your, your community is called yes. is a community of people who saw it before we did mm. because they definitely saw the character um they saw the the the, the um, yeah. yeah 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 no, definitely, man. I think for me, it's because I'm, I'm a big thinker. You know, I, I before I do anything, I like to. I'm a very calculated person. I don't just do things on a whim. You know, so in that house, you, there's no space for you to think too much. You know, you kind of have to just go with what feels right. You know, act on impulse, for lack of a better word. You know, so I think for me, that's what had me in the first off. I was like, ah, man, I don't know. I'm not sure if I should do this. Maybe if I do this, it's gonna lead to this. You know. Uh, but then I just got to a point where I was like, this, this is, I'm not going to enjoy my journey here. If I keep on thinking like this, you know, let me just do what I feel is right, you know. Why the antagonism, you can correct me if it wasn't, mm -hmm. why the antagonism as a greater group like that against the Yolanda faction, especially Yolanda? Because there was, it, uh, it, 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 it seemed like high school bullying yeah. you guys have isolated a person who uh, has a skin condition who's different to you guys mm -hmm. who, who who presents themselves in a different way and you guys are hell-bent on being the cool kids in the classroom and you said no we'll bully her that's what it looked like on camera Damn. and with each going day of that bullying she became a superstar mm. And, I, I, and it's, it's so funny for people who are inside. You didn't realize that you guys were creating a superstar yeah. by being these bullies. Because it reminded, I think it triggered everyone that in high school, there's always the cool kids who think they are the cool kids, mm -hmm. who think they speak well, they're well-groomed. They, um, they, you know, the mm -hmm. cool kids who come from good families. Yeah. And just because Yolanda is from Venda and it's, you know, all those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you guys were creating this beast without realizing it. Mm -hmm. At the time in the house, did you realize that that's what is going on? Um, well, I can't speak for others. I can yeah. only speak for myself. Yeah. I never went through a phase where I bullied Yolanda mm -hmm. or they were treated her or treated her in any way. Like, that wasn't appropriate. I think the only time where 
she actually came to me and had a conversation about something. Well, she didn't come to me. She was like, she thought about bringing this up to me, but she wasn't sure. Um, but it was just, I think it was one situation. I'm trying to remember what it was. Uh, it's left my mind now. Yeah. I'll come back to it if I remember it. But yeah. yeah, me, I was actually one of the people that was always, always on some, I think Yolanda is a very cool person, you know. Did you did was, you see her as winner potential though while you're inside? Definitely, I did. Yeah. I did. I think um, a person like you can see that far. You might not say it because it's going to compromise yes, the game. Yes, I did. But you can see what, that's actually competition. No, I, I really did. Uh, the fact that she kept on surviving each and every single week. Every week. Every week that she was... And up. the others couldn't see it. Yeah, I, I <laughs> peeped that and I was like, yo, this, this girl, she's a competitor. Yeah. But aside from that, like, whenever I'd speak to Yolanda, her and I would have, like, really amazing conversations. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, because a lot of people had the perception of she's just loud and annoying and whatnot, you know. A lot of and people, then she's going to leave. Let's nominate her. She's going to leave. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people thought that. But then I remember I had one conversation with her, the first really intimate conversation that sure. I had with her. I was like, geez, man, there's actually so much depth in this person. She's such a cool person. Mm-hmm. I remember even saying this to Daki. I was like, maybe, I don't know, maybe this is my fault. But whenever I see the good in someone, I continuously want to speak to that. I'll always see that person in that light. And I'll, I'll like try to make sure I see that as, mm-hmm. be, as much as I can in that person. I'm not someone that like, dwells on negativity too much so with Yolanda and I we formed like a really really close and a good friendship during my stay in the house I believe and and I'm sure you've had a, a moment to watch glimpses of the show that you've left um Yolanda won the audience something you guys don't know that mm-hmm. uh I I hope people who enter the show in the future can take note of this um that viewers are one in that diary room <laughs> she won viewers in that diary room. Her diary through sessions. Through and through. <laughs> we'd, we'd want other people's diary sessions to be cut short for yeah. Yolanda's diary session. And she'd sit there speaking for 30 minutes. And <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Yo, her diary sessions yeah. were so long. Yes. They were so long. <laughs> you, you'd feel it even when you were inside the house. Yeah. Like you'd know when Yolanda gets into the diary room. She's not coming She's out. She's not going to come out anytime <laughs> soon. Yeah. Yeah, I think, and Mac Jr. at times would also have like. Long diary sessions, yeah. you know. I, I, I definitely you picked that up. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. You can yeah. pick things like that up in mm-hmm. the house if you're very attentive. Yeah, you'll know that. Okay, this person takes a minute in the diary, whether or not it's received well on the outside. Mm-hmm. You never know. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. you can have an assumption or think that this might work for this person, but for her, I think her surviving each and every week was a clear indication that clear uh, indication. things are working out very well for her. <laughs> um, there is also an, an element of mental health. I spoke to Yoli um, before I spoke to BU. BU not so much. He didn't say his because he, he wasn't there very long. But Yoli spoke about the after effects on your mental health once you've left the house. Um, how are you handling that? And is it really a thing that happens? It's like, okay, hi, 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 and then just dip. That's definitely, that's definitely what it is. Because, yeah. I mean, you go into the house, obviously, you're just a normal dude. You come out and it's just like, all these people around you, all these people in your ear telling you what to do, you know, how you should move. You can't move in a certain way that you used to move in mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a whole lot of pressure attached to it, you know, and you literally have no time to rest because I got out the house thinking, okay, I'm going to go home for like a week, chill with my family, you know, have a good time. Nope. nope. <laughs> <laughs> I was told you have to get to work, you know, understandably. So how do I think I'm going to get to the money if I don't yeah, yeah, capitalize yeah. on this phase that I'm in right now as Correct. much as I can, you know. But in terms of dealing with my mental health, I started attending therapy even, you know, wow. trying to make sure that I, I get my mental state in the best place possible because it is a lot that I am dealing with right now. You yeah. know, um, changes, so many changes. It's a lot for one to take in. Yes, actually, your life really does change. It takes a 360 mm, turn, mm, you know. Mm, it, mm. From one point it was this, the next is this, and you have to just quickly find your feet. You, you've got no time to dip your, your foot in the pool. You have to just go all in, you know. Learning as you go as well. Yes, definitely. Learning as you go as well. Um, 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 being betrayed. I'm sure you've already been betrayed already by people. You're like, wow, okay. Is that yeah. how you're moving towards me? Yeah, man. Yeah, I think for me it was just a shocker on people who I thought would have my back when I was inside the house sure. that didn't really have my back like that. That's the only betrayal that I feel like I'd say mm-hmm. I've got mm-hmm. and so forth. Mm-hmm. People who I expected to support me like crazy, you know, they just didn't really show up like that for me. You know? yeah, yeah. yeah. Perhaps a bit of grace because they're going through what you're going through. Yeah, man, maybe, maybe. I think I, I don't like making myself the center of everyone's world. You know, I believe you're not the center of everyone's world. People go through things. People will experience things. But there are certain things where I'm like, 
um, when I was down and out in the house, you know, you, you, you could have had my back mm. in that instance, you know. So, yeah. Navigating this new life that you are living, um, you only about two months out of the being on TV every day. Um, does it not feel like, oh my gosh, the fame is going away? How do I hold on to the fame? As in, is it not a scary thought? No, not at all. Not yeah. at all. I think for me, I never even entered this thing for the fame. Sure. You know, the fame is just like an added bonus to everything. You know, um, for me, I went into this pursuing my dreams you know yeah. of being a sports broadcaster yeah nothing else yeah. everything else that happens uh around it or surrounding that dream is really just either a cherry on top or just an, an added bonus but i never really feel like oh, fame is slipping away from my hands or anything like that it, it actually kind of feels like for me it's actually growing you know <laughs> each and every single day i, I get more followers i just <laughs> More DMs, more everything, you know, it's more more opportunities. So for me, I, I I really I'm not bothered about fame dwindling or leaving my hands or whatever, you know. Yeah. You owe me honesty in this one. What's the most painful thing that was said to you about the internet and it actually hurt you? <sighs> Let me think. Hey, the thing is, I promise you, I'm I'm really not even lying to you. Whenever I see negative stuff, I don't know. My brain it just just filters it out. You okay. know, I I see negative comments. I just scroll past them like. It really has no effect. I think my experience in that house, when it comes to me, being in that toxic environment and that hard environment, because it was something that I was never used to. Like I told you, I was raised in love, you know, and in just in a good, stable environment. So stepping into that house with all that toxicity that I wasn't used to just kind of made me bulletproof, you know. Um, every negative comment that I see, I laugh at, you know, when it comes to me. Like it really has no effect to me uh, honestly you know what i don't like is the people around me them being like hmm. come at for that hurts me a lot you know i i, I get that hurts me a lot i get but that for me i get that um i i always say uh, personally with 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 the with the level of of of, of being known that this podcast has brought for me and the, mm -hmm. and the online profile and other things i do I, I, I don't want anybody in my life on the internet. I've taken a yeah. conscious decision yeah. that everybody that I love will yeah. not be on the internet with me so that when the internet comes for me for whatever I do, mm. it must be on me. Yeah. Uh, uh, trying to making it even hard for them to dig who's in my life. Yes. What, who's right down to family. Yeah. Because when things are said about me, family gets hurt. Yeah. The family, because the family is not trained to be bulletproof as we are mm. trained by this industry, right? So I'd rather they not say things about them. And I manage, maybe if they say things about me, I'm able to call and say, eh, some, something has been said about me. Yeah. Don't take it to heart. Wada, wada, wada. I'm yeah. fine. Yeah. Just know I'm fine. And I, it really hurts when they say things about people we love. Man, it, it's, it's painful. Yeah. You know, it's painful. It really is the most gut-wrenching feeling. Mm. Because, I mean, all these people have done is to just, be a part of your life and just love you and love you that's mm -hmm. it you know how, how can you come at people for mm -hmm. just loving you that's it they're, they're, there's no crime on their end you know um so yeah to me things that are said about the people around me and the people that i love um being come at just for loving me that yeah. really it, it, it stings you know but when it comes to me ah man you could say whatever i i don't take negative comments to heart at all i i'm thankful you know because i before the show i was someone that took everything to heart i think even during the show you'd see some of my housemates would agree you know some of my housemates would agree they'd be like oh, you can't even make a joke with this guy you know because i just took everything seriously i'd look too much into things but yeah. now really i'm just i'm so nonchalant about negative comments yeah. and things like that. why do you say the house is a toxic environment i think it's toxic because first of all when you go in there no one is your friend okay you, no one is your friend and you're all scrambling and scraping for the two million, you know. Mm -hmm. There are mm -hmm. people in there that will push your buttons to the max, you know. Also, just uh, for me, the most toxic thing was the live nominations. Thing, okay. You know, I think for me, because I had it the hardest um, the second time we had them. So it's like you're having all these people say all these things about you. And you have to coexist in the same mm -hmm. house as them. Mm -hmm. Make sure you behave in a good way. Don't get um, triggered to react in a way that you might regret later sure, on. Sure. Make sure that you keep your composure. Make mm -hmm. sure that you you remain yourself. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think that that training was very helpful because even the workspace and the work environment, you're gonna meet people or colleagues who 
push you up or rub you up the wrong way. Correct. And if just you just don't like you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and if you you act on that out of yeah. impulse, out of anger, you lose you, a lot. You lose a lot. You yeah. know. So in terms of going through that, it trained me a lot. I I never knew I had that much patience in me and that much resilience. So yeah. Did it get toxic to a point where you're like, there are people I'll never speak to again who were in that house? Nah, nah, nah. It wasn't that deep for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, like I said, I don't... I understood the environment that we were in. I understood that, okay, this is a game that we're playing. People are going to do whatever they need to do. But in terms of me holding a grudge against this person, I'm like, I don't ever want to see this person to speak to them ever again. Ah, it wasn't that deep for me. Who do you pray to, Snay? God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, God. Every every day, mm-hmm. every night before I go to sleep, every morning, even in the house, I think people would see that I, would, I prayed a lot. You know, I read the Bible a lot. That's always centered me. That's what I was raised in. That is all I know. We can be raised in church, but not have a relationship with God as yes. as, as individuals. Yes. So how do you actively pursue a relationship with God? Because somebody out there is a sniper and mm-hmm. they're going through, they're watching this. They're having a tough time. Perhaps they're in depression. Mm-hmm. Perhaps uh, because of the economy, the economy, they're in poverty, yeah. and they they've lost hope. They might even want to take their life uh, mm-hmm. at the moment. But hearing you, because they see you in a high in a high value as a high value person, you can influence them in a way that brings them to God. Mm-hmm. And we all know that God is the source of life. Yes. So what is, how can I build a relationship with God that can help me have hope? That's beautiful, man. Um, first things first, you have to look at the good in your life. You know, there's absolutely like in as much as you can live it, a life that is unpleasant or bad things constantly happening to you. But there's always a silver lining in whatever cloud that there is, you know, whatever bad things that you go through, there's always good. And for me, I know that God is good. You know, mm-hmm. All goodness mm-hmm. comes from God. Mm-hmm. So I've had moments in my life where. I just felt down and out. I was like, this is just terrible. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. Mm -hmm. But then I'd always just look at the good in my life and I'd be like, that has to be God. Mm -hmm. And that kept me going. And the more you focus on the good, the more it just amplifies, you know, and the more it, 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 it resonates with your soul and more it helps you connect with God because he is just everything that is good. Mm -hmm. So that's the first step that you could take. The second step that you could take is to want to know him, you know, to want like, in any single relationship, you sure. have to want to get to know someone. It's, sure. it's, it's a two-way stream, you know. Um, you, you can't just expect God to constantly pour into you, hmm. you know, and to just, ah, God must do this, God must do this. In order for him and for you to see other things that you've never seen that God does for you, you have to connect with him. You yeah, know? Yeah, and yeah. that comes with reading the word, you know, and just praying. You don't even really need to... Get down on your knees and pray. Like people sure. don't know that you. I could be driving. Yeah. I'd be like Jesus. Thank just you. say Jesus. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. He's heard it. Yeah. You know. I'd be like, yeah. a sigh. He's heard it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Just the intention behind it. You know, and wanting to connect with him, that'll do a lot for your life. So just want to get to know him, and just always look for the good in your life. I, I believe. Many Christians, though, and many churches have made or influenced rather or discouraged people from seeking God because they believe that you need to look a certain way, you need to behave a certain way Mm. for you to be accepted into the Christian community or to be loved Mm. by God. Mm. Um, Somebody out there once again feels like I'm not good enough to pursue a relationship with God. I've made too many mistakes. Are there too many mistakes for God? Absolutely none. Absolutely none. What you're saying is actually a very sad reality. It's something that a lot of people go through. They they step into the church and they feel like, oh, I'm not good enough to be here. And they forget that a place is a hospital for sinners. Mm. It's, it's not a place to house people who are per- per- perfect. Sure. It's not a place for perfection. Yeah. It's literally a hospital for sinners. Yeah. So if, if, if you're perfect and you're all good, what, what are you doing in church then? Because mm. you know, that's, that's not your place. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's yeah. not where you're supposed to be. God and connecting with God is is where you go to if you want to heal mm-hmm. and you want to become better. It's not a place of perfection. Yeah, you know? yeah, He's yeah. the only person that's perfect, perfect. The only place that we can find perfection in is in him. But every other environment, every other work that we might do with our hands will always be imperfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I don't agree with that notion. There can never be 
too many mistakes. Hence, mm. if you read the Bible, you'll see that God went and he ate with sinners. You know, he constantly engaged with sinners. He was never really, he was always out there trying to spread the word and spread the message and spread the love. You know, he wasn't really caught up in that whole, you have to look like this and, and no. Yeah, that's just my perspective. We're nearing the end of our conversation. Um, and this is something that I, I love to, to engage my guests on a lot when, when they're on the chair. Um, what's that one thing in your life that you know for sure? That I know for sure? Absolutely certain of. And you're like, this particular thing, I'm certain of. I'm certain about my family's love for me. Yo. I'm certain about... I think going through this period in my life just even proved it even more to me. Like, yeah, you could yeah. do anything in the world. I Even in the house, actually, I was like, you know what? Whatever mistake that I could make, mm -hmm. whatever blunders that I would make, or, like, however much I'd upset people, I know that my family will always be there um, to hold me and to support me and to welcome me back home. Yeah. And they proved that when I came out. I was just welcomed with so much love by them. Yeah. It was actually insane you know um yeah. i said my parents didn't know that i drank you yeah, know? yeah and that was a yeah. big fear of mine i was yeah. like who i don't know how we're we gonna have this conversation you know i, I doubt you even had the conversation no, like it was just passing you know yeah. they they were just so happy they were just like we're just happy you didn't do anything you know that you were gonna regret we or misrepresents who you yes, are yes yes yeah. you just lived who you are and, yeah. and that yeah. is absolutely fine you know they just welcome me with so much love man that's one thing that i'm certain about in my life and the snipers, they give you 100k every month. <laughs> <laughs> the snipers as well, man. Yo, I never expected it, eh? Because yeah. I don't know, there's this thing that you can feel in the house where you kind of feel when maybe the game is not turning like for you mm -hmm. or it's not coming along for you. So for me, I was like, people probably think I'm just this boring guy, you know? <laughs> and then coming out, I'm like met with so much love. People were like, yo, you inspire me. I resonate so much with you. Um, they just love me. It's 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 beautiful. I, I don't know. I shared it on my Instagram story. There's a police officer that, that I met um, recently, and yeah, he, yeah. he called his daughter, and he was like, my "See what just like, Yes, yeah. yes. That that moments like that for oh, me wow. is like, oh, wow. it's just wow, man. You just met with so much love, you know, and and compassion. Mm -hmm. and it's just beautiful to witness. It's amazing. Um, Snae Kotobe is uh, fresh out of the Big Brother house um, reality star I don't know if he likes that name yeah. but I think he prefers a sports broadcaster yes. whether it's still a manifestation <laughs> or it is in reality he knows what contract he has signed but that's definitely part of his journey that has been beautiful and it's so beautiful to witness what you're doing bro Thank what you, you're man. building and I can absolutely certainly say that the energy that i got from you from this conversation is that you're a person who operates from a place of love mm. you're very down to earth you're very humble and i wish you really the best in the journey wow. um in your businesses just in 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 uh, discerning your spirits around you and in your purpose mm. as you move along in this big bad joburg yeah. that we are in so really i thank you so much bro, for coming to the show and yeah, that, that, that's it. We can leave it. Man, thank you so much for having me. I, that really is one of the best interviews I've had. It was an amazing conversation. Yeah. Um, you really got into the parts of getting to know who Usnai mm, is, mm, you mm. know, and just speaking about what matters, you know. And I, I, I hope that God blesses your work. You know? Thank you, man. You're doing an yeah. amazing job on this platform. I even yeah. said it to you prior coming. Yeah. Actually, prior for the interview starting, I yeah. was like to you, yo... I watched your content. I was like, I think it's amazing what you're doing. Yeah. Unconventional. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what makes you great. You know? Right. So thank right. you so much for having me, creating this space, making me feel comfortable. Everything was just good, man. Thank you so much, brother. And you, I'll see you on the next episode. Introducing the epitome of luxury living, Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. 
this villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor to ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits.